Hey everybody, my name is Clarence and I'm so glad you're here. If this is your first time here at True North, we consider you a VIP and would love to connect with you. In the seat pocket in front of you, there's a blue welcome card. Fill out that card with your information and be sure to tear off the free coffee card as our gift to you. You can redeem that coffee card at our cafe for anything you'd like. And on the back of that card, whether this is your first time with us or you've been here before, there is a place to write down any prayer needs you may have. Our prayer team and our staff pray over these needs each week. You can use that same area to write down any answered prayers or God stories so that we can celebrate with you. You can place those in the offering baskets at the end of the gathering. Starting on Sunday, April 11th, we will be switching to new gathering times. These new times will be 8.30 a.m., 10 a.m., 11.30 a.m., and 1 p.m. True North Youth will still be taking place Sunday nights at 6 p.m., and our Wednesday gatherings will continue to meet at 7 p.m. We're excited to make room for everyone to attend a gathering here at True North Church on Sundays, and we can't wait to see you here. Hey, everybody. Can you believe Easter is next week? I am so excited about that. We have stuff for the whole family. There's an Easter egg hunt for ages three months through pre-K, as well as some awesome giveaways for kindergarten through fifth grade. So be sure to invite a friend and make sure you're here next week. We still have plenty of invite cards. We've got our five friend focus cards, as well as window decals. So make sure that you pick these up on your way out. And let's get the word out that Easter's coming. Invite your friends and neighbors and check out this quick video. If you're watching today, let me just tell you something. You can nurse your problem. You can curse your problem. Or you can be healed and declare it and let God reverse your problem today. Thank you for joining us today. We're so glad you tuned in. You can use the number at the bottom of the screen to let us know you're watching for more information and any prayer requests you may have. You can also visit us online at truenorthak.org.
and I will worship you. I'll worship you. I'll worship you always. Come on, sing it out if you believe it. And I will worship you. I'm going to worship you, Lord. within us wants to praise your name, wants to bless and lift your name. Thank you, God, that you're the Alpha, you're the Omega, the beginning and the end. You are the real thing, God. There's nothing that compares to who you are.
thank you for who you are.
If I could have uh, the churches come, not, I mean, we're True North Church, but their last name is Church. So if the churches, Nels and Lori could come, and also Chief Ron Dupie, our new chief of police. And if your mom wants to come with you, Betty, you can come if you want. And uh, we want to pray over our friends. And, and so if I could have my pastoral staff join, if, if there's some, if any of my elders or border here at this gathering, you can come as well. Um, but Nels and Lori Church, uh, we've been watching you and you've been watching us. And uh, we about a month and a half ago started saying, you know, um, we, we feel like, I'll, I'll let you hold that so I'm not having feedback here. But we felt like, again, we, there's a segment of our church population or, or, or people that call children at their home that would be north, they'd be seniors. And, and uh, we want to make sure that, you know, in this season of our church with a building project and I have to raise five million dollars, things like that. I don't have time to always make sure the needs of some of the core of this foundation of our church are taken care of. So we, we, uh, we brought you on. So the Nels and Lori Church are coming on part-time here to be overseeing our seniors as well as visitation to make sure part of our uh, community is, is reached for Jesus. I had another guy come up and say, I could give you a kiss on the cheek right now. I said, you don't have to. <laughs> but they said, uh, they said, Mark, you made a brilliant hire. And Nels and, and Lori, um, thanks so much for saying yes. Now, you, you, uh, you've been involved with ministry, planted churches. You pastored interim Door of Hope here in town. Uh, you have a thriving Bible college where? In the Philippines. We're still working in the Philippines. Oops. Yeah. We're working in the Philippines, of course, with uh, times the way they are. We can't be over there right now, but almost daily we're in contact with them. So there's a Bible college in the Philippines, yes. and, and uh, but COVID, COVID brought us our kids faster. Now COVID has kept them here, <laughs> yeah. and so yeah. uh, um, you know, just be, give, give, give a quick greeting. We're excited about you being on our team. Excited what you bring to the table, both of you. You know, I I'm humbled that someone who's probably been involved with ministry longer than I've been alive. Um, you started when you're ten. Yeah, about that. Okay, yeah. but in 1966. Right. You're a part of the college ministry at the university over here. Part of Campus Crusade, yes. One of the leadership training there. 
Yeah, and so, so, so you know, I was born in 71. So I was right in saying you've been involved in ministry in our city right, right. Or, or around us for longer right, than I've been right. born. And so we're so glad you're here. Well, we're really thankful and we're blessed. We were honored uh, that we were asked to be a part of the team. By the way, we, four of the churches we started are here today with us. That's right. <laughs> we They're have, your children. Uh, for the, those that don't know, we have seven children. So, for, <laughs> so The anyway. seven churches, not of, le, not of <laughs> right. like, revelation. <laughs> For the seven churches of the churches. Right, right. So we're blessed they could be here too. But uh, we're thankful to be able to help and serve with with the rest of you and certainly with this team. So Amen. we're looking forward to whatever God has in store. Yes. And uh, again, thank you. Pray for us. Some people have come to me and said they're praying for us. And we would encourage you to keep doing that. Yes. Thank you. That's great. Thank you so much. We're going we're to pray for them in a moment. But Officer Ron Doopy, Chief Doopy. I remember a couple of years ago, yeah, uh, a couple of years ago, I remember praying with you and writing letters of recommendation for your, your uh, kind of moving toward, you, know, you picked as a lieutenant. And then, uh, you know, our chief of police kind of had a revolving door for a little while, but we've got one of our homegrown Fairbanksons. Uh, you and your family have been here how long? Well... We moved back. I moved back in 2005. Yeah. Uh, left for a short period of time, 2000 to 2005. Yeah, yeah. And so you've been serving in the police in, in the police field for how long? Uh, just over 20 years. 20 years. And just recently was uh, our mayor selected him uh, to to be the chief of police here in Fairbanks, Alaska. And we're gonna pray over Ron. We're super proud of you. Uh, we believe in you. And we're behind you. We're a city church. And, and I've told my staff for years, as, as our church grows, God's going to give us the influence of our community. Are gonna, many of them will come from our church. And uh, we want to be a, a bright light for our community. Amen. And so we're going to pray for you, Ron. Anything special we can pray with you about? Oh, just, you know, like you said in the first service, wisdom and uh, guidance. Those are the, the big things um, we've been praying for in our family. Uh, throughout this entire process and we know that you know God put us God put me in this position for a reason and yeah. he has a plan and a purpose for me so he does uh, all the continued prayers are greatly yeah. appreciated yeah I had to Google don't don't make fun of me I had to Google how do you pray for a chief of police <laughs> I mean uh, yeah you know protection but it kind of outlined it but but wisdom and guidance because you're leading men and women in our in our force and here's the reality I don't know about you, I, I typically run from harm. How many guys are like, amen? <laughs> you know, uh, they find themselves running to the harm. They go to the crisis. And, and, uh, and so we're going to pray for uh, wisdom and guidance, protection, protection, and then for your family. And, and then for those, the fallen comrades that, uh, you know, I, I was a part of a, um, a, a funeral for a VPSO once and to see the, the community and fraternity among the, the firefighters and the first responders and the, and the troopers and the police department. I was like, wow, if there is people who get it better than the church, it's those people when it comes to, to ministering to, the, to those hurting within, within their own ranks. And so we're going to pray for you. Let's do this. We're going to pray for uh, 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 those ministering to the churches within the, the last name is the church. And then we're going to pray for the chief of our police. How many guys can do that? Let's reach our hand out toward, um, if I could have, uh, I'm going to put you on the spot again. Uh, Chris, come on up here. Chris, one of our board members. Would you pray for them as we had just anoint them with oil? And we're so, we're so honored that uh, we're at a place where we actually have the capacity to bring people like you on our staff and our team. So we're going to pray for you right now. Let's anoint them. And, thank you, God. Prayer of faith. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Father God, we just thank you for the churches, Lord. Yes. Lord, we come to you in the name that is above all names, Father. And Lord, we thank you for your favor, for yes. your anointing, for your continued anointing on thank their lives, you, Jesus. on this church, on our community, God. Mm-hmm. Thank you for bringing the right people at the right time yes. for the right season, Father. Mm-hmm. Lord, we just ask you to shine brightly through the churches and through the, 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 the ministry team, Lord, and yes. through this church, Father God, through, the, through True North, Lord, into our community. God, we thank you, we honor yes. you, and bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's reach out a hand out toward the chief of the police here for Fairbanks, and, and uh, we're so proud of you. We stand with you. And Lord, we thank you right now uh, for, for Chief Doopy. Lord, we thank you for such a time as this. 
We thank you for our mayor who, who uh, had a tough job to find who is the person I feel like would best represent my leadership and best represent our city. And, and he selected this gentleman. And Lord, we know that uh, uh, Ron is a good man. He's a godly man. But Lord, we pray your hand of protection upon him, your hand of, of give him wisdom and guidance. The Bible says if a man lacks wisdom, ask you. So I pray when he gets to a place with staff or challenged with our city that you'll give him wisdom and insight and he will not operate as a, just a, as a man but operate as a godly man influenced by the Spirit. We thank you for that. We pray for protection over him and the men and women that serve in our, in our city in blue. Yes. We thank you for that. And Lord, we pray right now for protection for his family and, and uh, that you continue to minister to his wife, Danielle, as, as he is... Uh, uh, in the front lines serving our community. We thank you for that. In your name we pray. And all God's people said, amen. 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 Would you high five, fist bump, shake someone's hands, you find a seat today. So good to have you at True North Church. Hi friends, my name's Mark and I'm one of the pastors here at True North Church. And I wanna say thank you for joining us today for our broadcast. I hope that the worship just that was just on was a blessing to you. I hope the message speaks to your heart. Our, our prayer is that you're encouraged with this. And I want to encourage you, if you're watching and you consistently watch and you want to make sure this broadcast is online, would you consider giving toward it? Would you partner with us? We'd love for you to do that. True North Church is an irrationally generous church. We truly believe we're more blessed to give than receive. I hope you enjoy the message that's following. God bless you. Thanks for joining us. Good morning, Second Service. Is it not a great day to be alive? Okay, the rest of you. Is it not a great day to be alive? Hey, I, I, if you could help me out, we stream our second gathering, and this is the one that uh, is, is then replayed into CBS, as well as correctional facilities all across our state, um, as well as Louisiana and Arkansas. They're showing True North down south. How many guys think that's okay? And uh, just found out today, the Highlands uh, Correctional Facility, the Kenai, picked this up. And so we're literally streaming in Spring Creek and FCC, to, uh, uh, in Nome, Anvil Mountain, now Highlands. And so would you give it up again for those watching online? So good to have you with us. And, and uh, uh, I, we get kind of breaks in series every once in a while. And this was a, kind of a planned break. It's a two-week mini-series. Uh, after Easter, we're starting a new series called It's Complicated. And uh, I, I read something the other day, Hallmark, you know, Hallmark cards. How many of you guys know now sometimes with cards, they leave the inside blank? Because there's so many complicated ways to describe relationships. They thought, let's just let people write their own thing in there, right? And so we're talking about it's complicated. We're talking about, we're going to talk about adultery. We're going to talk about, uh, uh, we're going to talk about some complicated relationship situations. What happens if your spouse commits adultery? What happens when you're single and you're struggling with, you know, you know, singleness and what, and maybe you're married and, and we're just going to talk about the complicated issues of sex, adultery, cohabitation, all that stuff that people just go, woo, it's complicated. And some of you are like, oh, snap. Um, no, we're going to go there. Uh, that starts the next, uh, uh, after Easter. But today in our pause between series, uh, we're going to talk about kind of, if I could, you know, if, if I was a teacher, I'd have, a, I'd have probably a favorite student or two, but I couldn't always tell people who those students were. As a preacher, I can tell you this is my favorite topic. The next two weeks, you're going to hear, like, I, this is my heart. I, I, I believe this. I wrote my dissertation on this topic. Um, and I'm going to talk about evangelism. I'm going to talk about reaching people far from Jesus. I, I, and when I wrote my dissertation, I was supposed to, it was a project-based doctorate, and it was on find a problem and identify a problem and then uh, address that problem, look at it, biblical theology behind it, as well as current literature, and then uh, kind of create a problem. And I, I, I saw what I thought was a problem in the state of Alaska, and that was there are some churches that are completely invisible in their community. I mean, the doors are open, um, but if you shut the doors, the only people that would know in that community the doors were shut were the people who attended that church. No one else would even know because they're invisible. So I wrote a dissertation called The Gospel Road System, and that was how, how do you create a two-way traffic flow? How do, you get, how do you get people to come and see what God's doing in the church, and how do you get people to go and tell that God's doing something great in the church, and, or God's doing something great? And so I called it the Come and See and Go and Tell Road. And, and the reason I even wrote that dissertation was it was four years ago this month 
this weekend, or not four years ago, excuse me, seven years ago, this weekend, not four years, seven years ago, this weekend, that this church had its third resignation as a pastor in three years. And uh, I was actually at the Hampton Inn over here that weekend. It's the same week we actually heard about the possibility of adopting my son. And 11 days later, I walked out of the hospital with my boy. And, and so, but, but we're, you know, we're, we're, we, we heard that the third pastor left in three years. And my wife goes, man, there must be some challenges over there. And, and, uh, and then my, when my wife said that, I thought, oh, snap. Because I like problems. <laughs> Anyone here like problems? It's like, I like mountains, I like problems. The bigger the problem, the more excitement I get, the, the more ambiguity, the, the, the bigger the risk, the more I'm like, oh, I'm attracted to that right there. Praise God, I wasn't attracted to that type of thing in relationships, okay? <laughs> I married someone who married a problem, okay? Um, but uh, in, in March 2014, the third pastor transitioned out of this church, and in July 2014, my wife came and assumed leadership here at True North Church um, with what I would say was the last time we'll ever get 100% vote at True North Church, 100% uh, vote. And, and, uh, but, but there was 87 people there that Sunday. Um, there were 60 junior hires first service in our junior high class, okay? That tells you that what God's doing at True North Church. But I tell you, when my wife and I came, there's a few things I want to unpack here before I look at a story in the Bible that, that I think is a reason True North has had some favor the last seven years. I don't think it's because I'm smart. I don't think any of us are smart enough in this room to have what God has done at True North Church. Um, but there's a couple things that were, that, that were elementary in my thinking process. Number one, I've always believed the church is created to fight. The church is created to fight. The problem is some people, the greatest church fight they've ever seen is in board meetings or in annual vision meetings. And you see, oh, you know, I've, uh, people just fight. And I'm thinking like the reason churches fight inside the walls of the building is because somewhere along the line, the pastor didn't give them a big enough fight outside the walls of the building. I'm convinced. Uh, look at the people. Look at God's people, the Israelites. Hey, when they were taking over new territory, advancing the kingdom of God, and going to new places, and, 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 and conquering it, and possessing the land, they were fighting battles beyond themselves. They were doing good. But the moment they stopped fighting a battle beyond themselves, they started complaining uh, you know, among, among the tribes. And, and, they started, and so we had the southern kingdom and northern kingdom. They're fighting. When, when we don't fight battles outside the walls to advance the gospel and the kingdom of God forward, we start fighting battles inside. We fight over the worship style and the color of the carpet and, and, and if a woman should be on the platform or not. We fight about a lot of stuff. But Jesus didn't die to fight over those things. He died to fight over people's lives and their souls for eternity. How many believe that? And so that's one thing we got here and thought we just shifted the fight. We shifted the fight and said, we're gonna go outside the doors of our building. We're gonna reach people far from Jesus. And that's one thing that drove us. The other thing that drove us was this. We'll do anything short of sin at True North to reach people far from Jesus. Anything. I remember, I, I, I remember six years ago, we're sitting around going, how do we do something for Easter that's never been done in Fairbanks? And we thought, we should get pink mopeds and put bunnies on them. You know how hard it is in December to find mopeds in Fairbanks, Alaska on Craigslist? We tracked down two mopeds and we took them over to uh, Fairbanks Collision Center and Scott Tompkins painted them hot pink for us and we had the same color banner on the wall and then we put bunnies on the east, on the, and I had people, Pastor Mark, you know Easter's not about bunnies, right? Are you kidding me? Oh no! I said, I know that's not about bunnies because we're inside the church and we know it's about Jesus who died on the cross and was buried and three days later rose from the death, held in the grave. We understand that, but there's people in our city who think Easter's still about bunnies. And until they come to know Jesus, I will leverage a stinking bunny for that. Amen. And we had pink mopeds riding around 12 hours a day with bunnies and people thought like, that's a weird church. And guess what? Uh, uh, we, we had people come and they met Jesus and now those people are on our serve teams and helping run ministries around it because we'll do anything short of sin to reach people far from Jesus. We're, so True North, I'm just letting you know, today is, is one way we can make sure that the church 
This, this building, not this building, you, we don't become invisible in our community. Look around. I mean, we're, adding, we're having to add another service because <laughs> most of you don't want to sit on someone's lap when you come to church. <laughs> Look around. There's not much room. But there's thousands in our city. Look at me. There's thousands in our city who still need Jesus. And we can fill up every, every church in our, in our community with people who need Jesus, right? And so today I want to talk about uh, how, uh, how, how, where does friendship and faith collide? Where does that take us? Because there's a story in the Bible of a man who's paralyzed. Now follow me here. He's paralyzed. He's lying on a three foot by six foot mat. You know what that is? That's the dimension of a coffin without walls. Paralyzed. I don't know if he had to have help to use the restroom. I don't think he had some type of job because there probably wasn't a whole lot of, in that day, social services to help people get jobs that had some handicaps and things like that. He probably didn't have, there probably wasn't outside the synagogue a, a handicapped parking spot. But, but he didn't have a job, but I'll tell you what he had. He had four friends. Because the Bible says four friends picked him up, took him to where Jesus was. So today I want to talk about who's your one. I, I've got a card, and if you didn't get one walking in here, you, you, you'll get one, get one on the way out. The usher will be handing them out. But, but, but I have four people on my, there's a five-friend focus card, but I've got four people that are coming to the church this Easter that I've invited. They're my guests I can't wait till, till Kevin and Beth walk through the door. They, they've been living together for 18 years. They're getting married in six months. I, I thought it's about time. <laughs> you know, it kind of, it's like, wow, I'm glad you figured out it's gonna work. Um, and then I got Matt coming and I have Chris coming. And what's fun is a couple of these are contractors working on our, our property over here. And I, 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 mean, I worked with saved people. I think most of the people I work with actually in the church are saved. Um, I mean, like, that work here, you know. Um, they are, uh, except for Pastor uh, Rob, but we won't go there. Um, <laughs> but I, I, I dropped into the project the other day, and, and it was 5.30 at night, and I often go, I go over there two or three times a week, and people probably think I'm micromanaging. I'm not micromanaging. I've got two people on my list I want to reach for Jesus. So if I can leave 10 minutes from work early to go walk through the, the place and interact with them a little bit, or, or stop over after lunch real quick and say hi. Um, but Chris, I walked in, it was 5.30 the other night, you know, everyone's gone, uh, there's a couple lights on, and, and, I, and I walk in there, he goes, oh, hey, Pastor, hey, Mark. And I said, oh, hey, I, how you doing? He said, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm waiting for my ride. I said, oh, your car broke down? He said, actually, no, I lost my license 10 years ago because of my third DUI. He said, but I get it back in July, and I haven't driven since then. Um, and, but I'm waiting for my ride. It used to be my girlfriend, but she left because I was working in Toke. And I'm thinking like, and he's just like telling me his whole life. And I'm thinking like, okay, when, when, when someone begins to open their life up to you, you're like, Do you, I'm a pastor. You know, most people don't tell me their whole story. Um, I said, if, if, would you come to church on Easter if I had a, got a ride for you? He said, absolutely. So I called up my buddy, hey, who lives up on Moose Mountain because this guy's out by Ivory Jacks. He, oh yeah, I'll pick him up every week if you want something. I'm like, yeah. All right, why am I sharing that? One day, here's a story. Jesus, let's go to Luke chapter 5, verse 17. One day he was teaching. Pharisees and teachers of the law who had come from every village of Galilee and from Judea and Jerusalem were sitting there. And the power of the Lord was present to heal the sick. How many want to know that when there's a healer in the house, good things happen? And it says, the power of the Lord was there to do what? Was present to what? Heal the sick. So guess what? There was a healer in the house and a couple friends. It says, some men came carrying a paralyzed man on a mat. And they tried to take him into the house to lay him before Jesus. And when they could not find a way to do this because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and they lowered him on his mat through the tiles into the middle of the crowd right in front of Jesus, when Jesus saw their faith, he said, friend, your sins are forgiven. The Pharisees and teachers of the law began thinking to themselves, who is this fellow who speaks blasphemy? Who can forgive sins but God alone? Jesus knew what they were thinking and asked, 
why are you thinking these things in your heart? That's the prophetic gift right there. He goes, why are you thinking? I know what you're thinking. Why are you thinking these things in your heart? Which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up and walk. But that you may have may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He said to the paralyzed man, I tell you, get up and take your mat and go home. Immediately he stood up in front of them, took what he'd been lying on. In, in other words, what became a mat became what he carried home with him one day. What, what, what used to be a bed now became something he carried out. How many of you guys want to know people can get up from where they've been for a long time and what used to care, keep them on the ground they can carry out? And everyone was amazed and gave praise to God. They were filled with awe. We have seen remarkable things today. Now here's the story. I don't have a lot of time to unpack it, but they showed, people showed, there's so many people inside the house that the, the friends carry the paralyzed man had to get up to the top of the roof. There's like a parapet on top and they had to dig through to let the man down to Jesus. But in that place was Pharisees and Sadducees who were trying to do what? They're trying to trick him, trap him with his words. They're like, I mean, in fact, you read through the Gospels, there's times they tried to kill Jesus for the saying things. How many want to know, when Jesus does Jesus things, people get mad? Not everyone's happy with that. Jesus was, doing, was busy doing what he's called to do. People are critical. They're upset. They can't, but people showed up because there's the healer in the house. And, and these friends grabbed this six foot by three foot mat. And, and they carried their friend to Jesus. So I want to talk about the intersection of faith and friendships. Because this story is about when faith and friendships collide. How do we build friendships and faith and intersections so that we can have a come and see and a go and tell. We can, have, we can have people come to know Jesus and we can go tell people about Jesus. How do we have that? Number one, friends don't leave friends behind. Back when I was a kid, friends don't let friends drive drunk. Friends don't leave people behind. When they know there's a healer in the house, they don't go, well, I just hope they kind of find out where they're at. No, this man was paralyzed. He was either too painful for him to walk, too weak to walk, too numb to walk, but he was paralyzed. He could not move. I wonder if any of us in here know people who are stuck. Stuck in their addiction, Stuck in the paralysis of analysis and, and, and they can't figure God out. How many want to know? You, <laughs> I can't figure the internet out. It doesn't make the internet not real. <laughs> Just because you can't figure something out doesn't mean it's not real. There's people out there, skeptics out there that don't understand. There's people who've been so hurt by the crowd they can't find Jesus because the crowd's in between. There's people who are too hurt, too pain. They're, they're stuck, stuck in drugs, stuck in alcohol, stuck in revolving dysfunction in their life. And, and maybe they're like, this. but friends don't leave people behind. And what happens when you have faith and you believe that there's only one meeting between God and man and that man is Jesus? We don't leave people behind. Someone had to clean up after him. Someone had to help him use the restroom. He had no job. He had probably nothing to live for from what we can tell, but he had friends. Friends. And it was worth these friends' trouble. And they picked up this dead weight. You guys ever, you guys, you guys ever picked up... Uh, it's like, like, how many of you guys have ever, you know, I'm older now, I'm, I'm almost 50, and the other day I'm biking on some trails, and I fell over in like three foot of powder, and it was like, okay, I'm getting old. It's harder to get up than it used to be. And how many want to know, you, you ever had to, have you ever, ever had to help someone else up? How about lifting someone up that can't help at all, and they're laying there? This guy is just laying there. He has no mobility. He's on a mat. They picked up. It would literally be dead weight, full weight, and they're carrying him. But, but, but friends don't leave friends behind. The second thing what happens when friends and faith collide, friends don't let obstacles get in their way. Friends don't let obstacles get in their way, when they, when they could not find a way to do this because of the crowd. In other words, they couldn't go one way. There was an obstacle, so they found another way. They found a roof, 
And some people might say, well, no, there's, there's a roof right there. Well, guess what? That's an obstacle. But how many want to know you can remove that obstacle? And, and they, they, they went up to the roof. They lowered him through a mat, uh, through the tiles in the middle of the crowd right in front of Jesus. And, and, and in those homes, I, you know, they built with stucco or like a, a mud on top of, uh, of, of, of they, they'd put down beams and lay thatch like little, little sticks and they'd cover it with mud, let it dry, cover it with mud. And, and so it was more like a stucco type home. And so I'm sure they're, they're inside and all of a sudden they heard something like this as people are, are using their feet to, to dig it under a little bit to start pulling the, the sticks up. And by that time, they're, they're getting down and these things are starting to fall. They didn't have a sawzall with a, you know, like a, you know, with a, with a battery operated sawzall. How many of you guys, that would be helpful that day. But they, they removed obstacles. And we know that there was, you know, biblically there's like a parapet on off many of the homes because Peter, we know, in the afternoon one day goes to the top of a rooftop. He's at the rooftop in the book of Acts praying as, as Jesus, as, as he has a prophetic vision of, of a sheep being lowered down with what he thought was unclean animals and God said, take and eat. And Peter goes, I can't eat there. Those are unclean animals. And God says, I told you they're clean. Because how many want to know the, the clean God can take the unclean and make it clean? So, so we have a picture here of this type of a house where he, they're on top of the roof. They lower him to Jesus <laughs> and, 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 uh, because, because friends remove obstacles. And here we live in a day and age, well, I don't want to get too enthralled. And, 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 and you know, we live in a day where he says, let, let, let live and you know, don't get too involved. But God created us for community. God created us to get involved. God created us to fight for the right things. And stuck people are things we should fight for. People trapped. Why do we do prison ministries? Because there's people halted. And they can't, they're, they're not allowed to have the freedom that, they, that we believe God can give everyone freedom. Amen? Friends, fr fr friends uh, cut holes in roofs. Friends find different ways. We, we remove obstacles. Number three, when faith and friendship uh, intersects, friends believe that Jesus can change anybody. Say Anybody. This man had been paralyzed. I don't know how long he'd been paralyzed, but they believed if I can get this paralyzed, stuck person to Jesus, Jesus can change this person's life forever. My, my wife and I um, spent 14 years at two churches, youth pastoring, and in between those two churches, we had a stint in a church in Modesto, California called Calvary Temple, and we went there about three years after what they... Uh, and maybe you heard about if you've grown up in church long enough, some of you weren't born back then. They had what they called the Miracle of Modesto where for 28 days they showed uh, the drama, Heaven's Gates, Hell's Flames, and 33,000 people came to know Jesus within a 28-day period in Modesto, California. And so we're down there, and it was one of these churches where we saw people commit their lives to Jesus every week. It was a powerful place to be. And, and, and while we're there on staff, we met a guy named John. And John had tattoos all over his face, all over his body. And granted, this was 20 years ago when that wasn't popular. And uh, we got to know John. John was a lead usher for one of the gatherings and a greeter. And John helped run Nineveh Outreach, was an outreach to the homeless part, it's a part in Modesto, California. And John was an incredible man. And, and I said, John, tell me your story. He said, well, Mark, he says, before I met Jesus at Heaven's Gates, Hell's Flame, I, I was a high-ranking night hawk with the Ku Klux Klan. And I guess there's ranks in Ku Klux Klan. He wore a black robe with a black hood. He was security for Ku Klux Klan for major events. And he was a sniper, all sorts of stuff. And before Christ, he was an evil, angry man who was very bitter, very racist, all those things. But when he walked down to the altar at Calvary Temple and gave his life to Jesus, his life was transformed forever because God can change anybody. Lives can be transformed. And so a week or two after he accepted Christ, he made an appointment to meet with a pastor and he brought his black hood in and his black cape. And there was, it, they, they, they put it in a plastic box and, and, and put it on the wall. And it said the power of God. The power of God to reach down and save anybody. I don't know who you think, if you're watching online or you're in this auditorium, who you think is unredeemable. There's nobody unredeemable in God's eyes. God recycles all sinners. 
who come to him. Jesus says, when Jesus saw their faith, whose faith? The faith of the friends. When Jesus saw their faith, who's your one? When faith and friendships intersect, they connect with an almighty God who can change anybody. And number four, real quick, is friends know that the person's greatest need is Jesus. Look at me, friends. The greatest need is not for a paralyzed man to walk or a blind man to have sight. I'm colorblind, and someone wanted to get me colorblind glasses. Do you think Mark would like that? And I'm thinking, like, I don't really care if I ever see purple. I do care about people lost for Jesus, though. I don't know the difference, but here's the greatest need. The greatest need on planet Earth is not that everyone's physical ailments would be healed. The greatest need of humanity is the hearts would be set free from the darkness that sin has created, and they find Jesus, and he forgives them of their sin. And so Jesus, in this context, he's in this house. There's power in this house. And and, and verse 22 says, Jesus knew what the Pharisees were thinking and asked, why are you thinking these things in your heart? Which is easier to say. Your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up, and, uh, get up and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sin. The reason he came to forgive sin. He came to forgive people of sin. And he says, so, so you know that that's the key authority I have. He looks at the man and says, get up and walk. Why does Jesus set captives free? He says, here, why does he set, why does he heal the blind? And, and he gives sight, sight to the blind and, 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 and ability to mobility to those that are paralyzed. He does that because the ultimate need is forgiveness of sin. He doesn't do miracles so we can experience miracles. He does a miracle so people would come to know Jesus. That's the greatest need people have. Look at me, friends. The greatest need you have and your friends have, and if you're listening online right now, the greatest need you have is a relationship with Jesus because we all have an expiration date on the milk carton of our hearts and lives, every one of us. I want you to take the card out you have in your hand right here. If you don't have one, Pretend like you have one. Fake it till you make it. Pick one up on the way out. I've got mine. In fact, I took a screenshot of mine so I can open it up during my prayer time wherever I'm at. And I can pray for Kevin, Beth, Matt, and Chris. I have four on here right now. You don't have to have five friends, but I'm gonna ask you, would you write down five friends who need Jesus in the next two weeks when you begin to pray for them? Now, here's the power of this. For the sake of names and... and, and uh, um, This person attends our church now. I'm gonna call him Joe. Joe hit rock bottom this last summer. During COVID, his his marriage fell apart in divorce. Uh, Joe's in the military. He had a friend named Mario. Mario wrote Joe's name down on a five friend focus for Christmas, for Easter, for two years. Mario's now been PCS to another location. He's, He's down south. Uh, where there's no snow right now. I feel bad for him. And, and, uh, but he'd been praying for Joe for two years. And this last June, his buddy Joe, who never came to church, even though he was invited for a couple years, Joe came to church. Joe actually called and said, I, uh, and talked to Pastor Matt and said, I, I met Jesus. I prayed the sinner's prayer. Matt called and said, well, I'd like to meet you on, on a Wednesday. Came on a Wednesday. Joe, Joe smelled like the, like, the, like the bottle. I mean, Joe came with, with strong a sense of alcohol on his breath for a month, month and a half. The first five, six weeks he came. Joe is not the same man Joe used to be because God can transform anybody. And, and uh, he, he, how many want to know Jesus' life can transform a person's heart more than all the other things that they could ever find? And so I don't know, it's a Wednesday that Joe hasn't been here. So when you pray for people, just know you might see the fruit right now, but it might be someone else that sees the fruit after you leave. But you still pray for people. Can I pray with you right now as, you, as this week we... We, we become the one. Our faith and our, 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 our friendships intersect. Lord, would you cause us to be people of faith? Would you cause us to be people who our lives intersect with others? God, for those in this room, it could be friendships. For those watching online, perhaps they're, they're incarcerated, Lord, and there's people in, in their cell or there's people around them that they want to intersect and, and lead to a faith relationship with Jesus. Give them wisdom to do that. Give us wisdom. I thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. 
What a fantastic service. If you would like to respond to something in today's message or receive prayer, text ABC to the number on the bottom of your screen and someone will reach out to you soon. And don't forget to follow us on all our social media accounts to stay up to date with True North Church.